everyone. It is spring in Minas Gerais in Brazil. <laughs> well, not really. It is actually heading into fall down there, but we here in southern Spain are simulating what spring looks like in the area, the most popular region in which Rapiculus lelias grow. Welcome to this video. I hope you enjoy a little bit of... <laughs> Well, creative imagination to bring you something authentic and then we can talk about how's it growing with Rapiculus lelias. On my adventure to find some Rapiculus lelias that bloom in spring, I thought if I can't go to the mountain, I would bring the mountain to me. And here we are. We've got Lelia flava. We found a Lelia flava in Spike and Oh my goodness, look at that pink, cute little Lelia alvarenguensis. Woohoo! Can you believe our luck? This is amazing! On the day that I happen to be around, I get to see two beauties in bloom in their natural habitat, surrounded by grasses. Seeing as it is spring, some of the dyed back grasses that managed to hold onto their structures over the winter are still there. And then we're getting some fresh grasses in coming through with their new flower and seed heads. It's just a beautiful sight. The transition between winter and spring in this region. And these little critters are very difficult to find if you don't know what you're looking for, because as you can see, they are relatively covered up and unless in bloom, you probably wouldn't be able to notice that they are around. Now granted some areas, there were many more cliffs that I had to traverse, a little bit more rocky, and then you could see the little tiny pseudobulbs with the very, very deep red burgundy leaves. As I mentioned, if you know what you're looking for, if you don't, you will pass them by very, very quickly. But then if you see one bloom and then you see another bloom, step in a little bit closer and dig around in that rocky crevice and have a little snoop around where the rocks meet the grass and then you will see the actual plant and then bit by bit your eyes get accustomed to what you are looking for and pretty much you will see them dotted around everywhere careful that you don't step on them because they are really really small but it is our lucky day lelia varanguensis and lelia flava are in bloom Lelia flava apparently has just opened up. <laughs> Humor me here, because you can see that there are still some buds left to go, but she has opened up very, very quickly. Lelia alvarenguensis took much, much longer to open up. Each single bloom took its time between three to five days until the whole spike is almost bloomed out. Lelia flava, on the other hand, the blooms just started opening successively one day after the other. You can also see how windy it is in this region. There's a lot of wind, especially this time of year when it transitions from winter into spring. But there's also a lot of moisture around because during the winter, all the dew and the cold and everything, it all works together to get these little guys ready and prepared for what's coming next. Now, during the spring, it's probably gonna rain a little bit more than it normally does during the summer, but I can tell you some Rapiculus lelias actually live submerged in water for a certain period of time because there's so much rain and then you will notice that where they grow it actually pools water and that is where they grow getting completely inundated and to some points submerged in the water but that water will clear out rather quickly as well so it's not like they are in the water day after day after day so as the water drains away, their surroundings will turn into dry again, and the next day they will be submerged again. So that's how much water Rapiculus lelias can take in their natural habitat. And it's a good thing to simulate that in our spring cultivation when we grow them privately. Another thing to be aware of when it comes to Rapiculus lelias is the fact that when we turn them towards the light, we always have to make sure that we face the back of the leaves towards the harshest part of the sun because naturally that is exactly how they grow as well. The reason they can sustain the harsh conditions exposed to the bright, bright sunlight, especially when they don't have any more grass to protect them from the harsh sun, 
which during the summer, all that grass will become dry, crispy, and pretty much die back. They grow in such a way that the front of the leaf, what we consider the front of the leaf, faces away from the sun, and it is the back of the leaf, the more robust part of the structure, that faces towards the direction where the harshest light is coming from. So keep that in mind when you have Rapiculus lelias in your own collection, that you make sure that you're facing them away from the light source. Of course, if the light source is coming from directly above, there is no difference there. But out in nature, these guys live on cliff faces, on mountain sides, along gravel paths, etc., and they are pretty much exposed from the moment the sun rises to when the sun sets and the angle of the sun is a little bit lower in the sky during springtime. So they're coming in with a full 90 degree force of that sun and their most delicate structures are facing away from the light. By the time the summer comes, it gets really, really tricky and all they depend on is dew. But by that time, the roots that they grew during the spring when they were partially or almost submerged in water, the roots have already grown into all the rocks and the crevices, into the coolest part of the terrain where they are found. Hence, they find water even during the summer. Not much, but enough to sustain them. So it's not like they go into a summer rest per se. They still need water around their roots during the summer. And that is how they get it in their natural habitat. And you can see how windy it is here. Woohoo! Perfect. This is what they love. The reason they have to grow such long spikes is otherwise some of these species wouldn't stand a chance to get pollinated, especially the spring bloomers, because they're competing with the length of the grass that is growing around them. Some Rapiculus lelias are so short and stout that even their blooms are short and stout, and they bloom during the summer because by that time, the grass will have gotten crisp and turned dry and pretty much disappeared. So keep that in mind also when you are cultivating Rapiculus lelias in your private collection. Not every Rapiculus lelia blooms in spring, and you can pretty much determine which one is a spring bloomer, a fall bloomer, or a summer bloomer based on the length of their spikes. Short and stout spikes, summer blooming. Long and out of control spikes that can bob around in the wind, those would be your spring bloomers. Also fall early winter bloomers because when it is fall the grasses can recover a little bit and there's a small little grass covering, you know, patches here and there. It's not consistent, but some small grasses thrive throughout fall and winter, and they somewhat protect the smaller stout structures as they head into the coldest months of the year. We are lucky enough to be in this region during spring, and we were lucky enough also to find ourselves some gorgeous blooms of Alalia flava and Alalia alvarenguensis. I'm really, really pleased to be able to share this little moment moment with you and you can see my little staging area is somewhat falling apart because it is so windy. Full disclosure here, transparency, I went out into the boondocks and I got myself different kinds of grass, or different kinds of growth and maturity stages. I put them in a toilet paper roll to give myself a bushel and this one kind of fell through so we'll just stuff it back into its place so that, you know, we don't lose the effect here, something like that. And this bushel has totally collapsed. <laughs> I had fun putting this together, little bit of a care guide, showing how they would appear out in nature, seeing as I probably in my lifetime will never get to be able to enjoy this. Let's get in a little bit closer to see this contraption, if you're interested. <laughs> Now, this may be a little bit complicated, but that is what Rapiculus lelias are all about. As I mentioned, they are not easy to see at first glance. Sorry if I have any wind distortion in my mic, keeping it authentic here. But if you see blooms peeking out on a spike, then all you have to go and have a look, see through the grass, where is the plant? And then you will discover foliage and leaves. Usually they look really, really ratty. They don't look so nice, but that is because they are really exposed to the worst of the worst up in those mountains on those cliff edges. But you will discover more and more little lelias growing in the cluster and around. Usually species will stick together 
but there are some natural hybrids as well that you will find. So the identification is always a little bit of a hit and miss because they all look relatively similar unless you get them right next to each other and can define which Lelia you're looking at. But yeah, you have to rummage around in the grass a little bit and then you will find the foliage. Hang on a second, let's go over here. I think I just saw another one tucked away in there. Oh, isn't that cute? And that is how you will find them out in nature. If you find one flower spike, have a look, see where the plant is actually at. And they are not big blooms. I can tell you as I'm in my mind rummaging around in those mountains and up those cliff faces, they look like little four daisies, especially in springtime. This is what I would consider the South American daisy but a luxury one because the blooms are not very big at all. But depending on how much they have to deal with and what they're getting bashed up against, grass, etc., and if the flower spike were to snap, but normally if everything goes well, they should last at least four weeks and look pretty, pretty amazing. So I've shown you how to find them. I've shown you what to look for. Please don't pick them up. Don't dig them up and take them home thinking that it's the right thing to do to take them out from the wild, leave them where they are and see if any of your nurseries, commercial nurseries has any available to purchase if you want to cultivate them in your private collection. I find them relatively easy to cultivate. The little ones, the really tiny ones, I find much, much harder because the stress they have to go through once they have been shipped. But in general, I find they are pretty easy to grow and I can keep most of mine that are robust and strong enough outside all year round in my climate from five degrees Celsius. And then when it gets hot, it just gets really, really hot. <laughs> so five is the minimum I experience here. And in their natural habitat, they pretty much get those low temps, if not a tad lower than that. When it comes to fertilizing in their natural habitat, what I'm seeing, there's not much to go around. I mean, their roots, when they dig into the crevices, they will find nutrition. So they do like their calcium because of where they live. They get a little bit of calcium here and there from the rocks they're on. But in cultivation, I give them 100 parts per million, maybe 160 parts per million for the bigger ones, like the Lelia flava on the right. She is a rather large, rapiculous Lelia in comparison to the other ones that we found. But in general, 100, 160 parts per million is plenty. They will probably grow grow one to two structures per year, depending on the maturity and size. And don't be alarmed if they lose an old leaf. That is what they do. The pseudobulb will remain intact for much, much longer, but the leaves can drop. Now, I haven't seen any problems with pests. Even while I was walking around on these cliff edges and found these lelias, I didn't see anything resembling scale, etc. It's more animal damage. It seems like maybe mice or rats would be gnawing at the leaves because they are very, very fleshy and are a source of water. People like us stomping around on those cliff edges might do damage because we can't see them and we brush up against them with our shoe. But in general, out in nature, they are not really prone to pests. They are more prone to pests and cultivation, so keep an eye out for scale. I have not seen anything along the lines of mealybugs in my collection, but Scale was trying to get a foothold in the Lelia flava. But since I dealt with the fact that the Scale were trying to populate my flava, they have not been back. And neither has the Scale on others where I saw them trying to get a hold. When you're out in the plains and the mountainous areas of Minas Gerais, I'm telling you, it is gorgeous up here, very, very clear atmosphere. Very windy, as you can see, <laughs> but so, so rewarding because these guys are small and they will fit anywhere. It's clear to the eye that they will find a way to fight and survive. That is in their DNA. They have to fight to survive in these harsh conditions. A rapiculous Lelia in a private collection is getting pampered compared to what their compadres are doing out in nature. So know that if you have a rapiculous Lelia, you are pampering it, even though you think you're starving it of any kind of nutrients. Just go easy on them. The only delicate thing about them is they don't need much. Watch the light angle, protect them from burning. And if you see sheaths on your rapiculous Lelia, I would highly recommend you leave those on. A, it's a fiddle to get the sheaths off, and B, 
Because they're exposed to such hard conditions, you don't want to be burning the pseudobulbs. Considering the temperatures that they can tolerate, in this case, I highly recommend leave sheaths on Rapiculus Lalias for their own good. That is what I'm doing anyway. When I got mine in new, everybody was scrubbed down and cleaned to a T because I wanted to see what I was up against. But from here on in, all my sheaths around the new growths stay on. I hope that you enjoyed the little journey to Minas Gerais, AKA Southern Spain, to see how these beautiful cuties grow out in nature. And if you watched this video to the end, thank you so very, very much. I appreciate that you humored me. I hope that the imagination took you away into the mountains and that you enjoyed discovering and finding Lelia Flava and Lelia Alvarenguensis in bloom and then a few other ones scattered here and there in the grass. Looking forward to seeing more of my collection bloom as the year progresses. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition though, that you stay safe, I would love to see you in the next video. And another thing, take care. Bye.